I'm here in the Kargasaki Vineyards in the Santa Rita Hills. Beautiful sunny morning. There was a little bit of fog, but it's blown off. It's warming up the soil. Fabulous vineyards. I'm with grower Peter Kargasaki, as well as two wine producers that buy the grapes from here. Adam Lee from Siduri and Brian Loring of Lauren Wine Company. Peter, tell me about it. I mean, incredible little vines. You can tell you can make concentrated dark colored wines with lots of fruit and character. How do you get these, these tiny little bunches? These um, are primarily the result of trying to influence for disrupting f the flowering in the, in, the, in, the, in the middle of spring. We, what we do is we come in as flowering is going on and actually start leaf pulling. And what that does is it kind of disrupts the photosynthesis a little bit and the nutrients that are going to the flowers. And what ends up happening is it decreases the fertility a little bit. And um, the size of a berry is, is partially influenced by the number of seeds it has. So the less seeds it has, the smaller it ends up being because there's a, a hormone that the seeds produce, um, I think gibberellic acid. If it has no seed, then either it, it, the seed, the berry falls off, but a lot of times they'll stay on. And as by having a lot of these little berries and by influencing for smaller berries, the wines are more concentrated because as the size of a sphere decreases, the ratio of its surface area to its volume increases exponentially. So you get a much higher ratio of skin to, to juice. juice. And the bottom line is that's how you can get darker colored Pinot Noirs. It's not just science working it over in the winery. You know, it's actually right here in the vineyard. And you were saying that some people say, oh, he's really growing Syrah, it can't be Pinot Noir. No, it's, it's primarily a function of berry size and, and, and also growing the Pinot Noir in a really low figure condition so that mm -hmm. it, it, it has a longer time to ripen, which also helps to concentrate the anthocyanin and the flavors. Yeah. And part of it is also due to our, our very long growing season because of our temperate climate. We're fairly close to the ocean, so we have an early bud break and then in the summer, that also keeps us very cool. So we have this very long, cool growing mm. season. So typically we'll have bud break at the beginning of March, and then we'll pick in the middle of October. So Adam, come on over and say so. So, th I mean, this is just caviar for you, no? Yes, uh, I, love, uh, I love when I see this. And when I see the small seedless berries, uh, those tend to produce a lot of concentration, a lot of richness. We have to be careful to manage the tannins because the tannins can be a bit stronger in the wines because the skin to juice ratio is higher. So we do wait longer to pick sometimes, but because of the weather conditions here, it works out wonderfully for us. And Brian, come and talk about like the style of the wines then that these small little bunches give you then. Just naturally what they're going to do is lead to a bigger style Pinot Noir. It's part of as uh, you mentioned earlier that people say, well, you're adding Syrah to get this style. It's not. It's all about the fruit. And I think following Adam's lead, um, we decided to let the fruit speak and become that. We didn't force it to try to be something else. Um, this is not a site that I think you really want to look to try and make a really light, elegant Pinot. We can make really balanced wines, but they're definitely going to be bigger, richer, and bolder. Well, let's go taste some.